The number one rule for anyone with a productive public land coos deer spot is to never take anyone there. But my friend Floyd Green is violating that rule by escorting me into his favorite back corner of Arizona's Coronado National Forest, where he's going to leave me to enjoy the serene stillness of desert whitetail country. After a long and busy year, I'm here to soak up the dead quiet and just maybe find the buck of a lifetime. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. It's December right now, and all fall, I've been looking forward to just sitting here by myself in the quiet of the desert, glassing for coos deer. It's just, this is one of the most beautiful, quiet, pleasant places to be. This year, I've spent so much time getting hammered by weather or people's expectations and other people's hopes about hunts we were on. And I just wanted all along just to be <laughs> like sitting here enjoying this place where it's just quiet and like nice. And you're looking for these mysterious little deer out on the landscape that are best found through glassing, best found through looking rather than walking. This kind of hunt, to hunt desert whitetails or coos deer, is like one of the unsung hunts that this country has to offer. People always want to go for mule deer, they want to go for elk, which is great. But getting tags to hunt coos deer is easy. You can get one every year and there's a lot of ground. There's a lot of deer. It's just like, I just can't believe more people aren't into it. But right now I'm glad they're not because I just want to sit and look for deer and think. And this is kind of the perfect place just to clear your head. He was so, uh, 
just kind of out of it. And he would kind of have forgotten that we were even fishing, you know. Like you'd fall asleep and wake up and it was all a haze. And it wasn't a few days after that that we were giving him a, a lot of morphine. And I'd go to give him morphine and uh, he'd take the oxygen out like he didn't want the oxygen anymore. And the last thing he ever said is he kind of woke up from a stupor. And he said, uh, I want to go for a nice long drive. That always struck me as the weirdest thing to say. And, um, like being out in a place like this, man, as much as we fought, like being out in a place like this, I would kill to be able to, uh, like have him up here just to see this kind of stuff. I think this would blow his mind. I always think about that. When it's quiet like this. Yeah. sun is going to do just what I was hoping it would do. Light up the hillside. The deer does pop, you know, the sun shines on it. This is probably my best opportunity yet where there's a buck at the base of that volcano-shaped peak up there. I feel like I'm going to... I feel like I'm not going to go after that buck. Here's the deal. I got a full day, I got like a day and a half left to hunt. I feel like I might invest a ton of time in that bucket. Like, there's a lot that could go wrong. I'm trying to go up and get that buck. One thing I'm worried about is just bumping deer. They're gonna spook and carry that buck off with them. That's one thing. The other thing is, it's so far away. It stuff never looks like what you think it's gonna look like. And getting up there and knowing you're in the right spot, but then not being able to find the buck. I'm just gonna remember that that guy's up there. And come back later if I need to. So here's the thing about this buck situation. When I was a kid, if you got a big deer, and I never did as a kid, if you did get a big deer, you got a big deer because it happened to be the first one that came along. I remember one year my old man killed a real nice whitetail, and he didn't kill that whitetail because he had been passing up all kinds of bucks. He killed that whitetail because he was in his stand and that whitetail walked by, and it might have been a spike, it might have been a big eight point. It wasn't until I was much older that I developed like the patience to let some deer walk by. But sometimes you go out in the area and there's a lot of animals around and you realize that if you were to shoot the first deer you see, you're not gonna be hunting that long. And you wanna be out and let the whole activity breathe and have it have space. In a situation like that, I like to take my time and try to find nice mature animals if I'm not in a meat crisis and right now I'm not. The way I think about it, if you really love something and admire something, I think it's natural that over time you're gonna want a handful of like exemplary specimens that you'd have in your home to look at and appreciate. I don't feel that I need to 
fill my home with tons of them. I don't think of it as a display to other people. It's not for them, it's for me. But it becomes this emblem of something. It's not like a bragging thing, but it's like this, this thing of beauty that you admire. There was an explorer who spent a lot of time with Eskimo hunters. And he was saying how when they killed a polar bear, they would bring the polar bear's head home and they would offer it pieces of meat. What they explained to him was the bear would realize that the hunter was a good guy. He was okay. And he would explain to other bears, like to the bear spirits, he would explain to the bear spirits that if you're gonna have to get killed by someone, that's not a bad guy to kill you. I believe that showing respect to animals and appreciating their attributes makes you a better hunter. So trophy hunting is like, and as much I hate the term, because I think the implication is that you don't care about any other part of the animal. If I was to shoot a big buck and someone came along and said, you can walk out of here with that head or that body, I would absolutely take the body. But I think it would be a form of sin to take to make the other decision, a, a sin against the land, you know? But if I can have the head and the body, that's a good deal. been out here longer than I figured I'd be out here longer than I planned. I kind of wasted all my time playing big time trophy hunter. But today is the last day simply because the season ends today. This is the last day of the season and that's it. When I first got here, I was kind of blown away by just the magnitude of the landscape, like how much glassable ground there was and like how much stuff there was to look at. But after all these days of just systematically scanning all these pockets and hills with my binoculars. The unknownness of this place has diminished to where I feel like I could walk away from here right now and draw a topographical map of this place from memory. Like I've just been staring at it for so long. This is some trophy country. You know, I don't mean that there's a bunch of trophies running around, but I mean just the place itself just to walk away from here, having been here and hung out and just spent this main days just like observing is sort of in and of itself is like a prized possession, you know? Ooh, there's a bedded down deer. That's a buck. See, I'm telling you, man, that sunlight hits and deer just blow up. Holy smokes. That's the biggest, that's a dandy, a dandy, dandy buck. That's the biggest buck we've seen this trip. Just a bedded. God, it's a nice buck. All right. Well, that's what I'm gonna do today. I need to get up into that rock. And I think I'll be in shooting range of that buck.
I don't know what happened, that book is just gone. I mean, the wind's kind of bad, but we're still pretty far away, but he's just not better where he was better. A lot of time goes by and who knows what happens. It's funny to end a hunting trip on the actual last day of the hunting season. Like it would be illegal for me to hunt tomorrow. Cause it gives it this perfect finality, you know? Like you can't entertain ideas about coming back out one more time. It's just done, it's over. It's kind of a blessing cause it lets you walk away from it. The thing that surprised me most about this trip is how unbummed out I am that I didn't get a deer. I was expecting to be really upset, but I just am not. I think that's like a weird thing. Like I came out here with this idea, a conflicted idea of trying to find a big coos deer buck. I got a bunch of meat in my freezer. I'm not hurting for it at all. And I was like, this would be the perfect opportunity to come out and just be with myself and shoot a wall hanger coos deer. And it's funny because even though I'm conflicted about trophy hunting, an upside of trophy hunting is you don't come back and you're like, I was skunked. You come back and you think, well, I didn't find the one I was looking for. But I'll always juggle that, the little bit of a pickle you get in as being like to hunt for meat or to hunt for other purposes as well. It's like if I had just come out to get deer meat, I would have shot a deer my trip would have been over. So I made a deal and I swapped that for having just the time and the quiet that I spent just like studying deer, watching deer, trying to make a plan, plotting, looking, 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 you know? And in the end, you wind up coming out of there with nothing, but it's almost short selling it too to say you came out of there with nothing because you came out of this like, like rich class of experiences um, that I wouldn't have, experienced or enjoyed if I just shot that spike. But some other part of me is like, you know, that's what you're out there for, man. You're out there to get a deer. There's a deer. I think when it comes to family, love, hunting, it's just like this stuff is so complicated. It's so complicated that, like I'm a dude who talks a lot and it's so complicated that I can't explain, like I just can't explain sort of what I think when I look at a deer sometimes. Is it, a, is it meat or is it some sort of emblem or is it something grander than each because it's like this, you know, this amalgam, man. It's like this thing that's just bigger than any part. It's all of that stuff. It's emblems, bragging rights, adventure, meat, history, challenge, motivation, being a little bit crazy. It's just all the parts of the world.